My name is Daniel Pagliozzi, and I'm a cat consultant. You can call me DQ. Check me out! <laughs> so this is Cubby. Uh, Cubby I rescued from the local city pound and fell in love with him immediately after his little legs. I don't think there's anything crazy about liking cats. I've got tattoos with cats on them. I've got cats all over my fingers. I've got cats meow. I mean, this is my lifestyle. I'm not cat crazy. I'm cat centric. I might look a little intimidating at times, but you know, come on guys, I'm covered in cat tattoos. You know, after I spend time talking to my clients and I have a pretty clear idea of what they want, it's usually not hard to match them up because Kitty usually has 10 to 15 really, really amazing, outgoing, friendly, and just downright lovable catchlerettes in all kinds of breeds, all ages, all sizes. You're getting a nice eclectic mix. When I'm doing my matchmaking, my process is to match energy levels and person's lifestyle. I just want to make sure that we're not looking for a cat that could be a potential deal breaker for them. You don't have to always have love at first sight on the first day. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. We aim to match cat soulmates. The first few days after an adoption can be kind of dodgy sometimes. So uh, I like to do a home visit and you know, as a, as a consultant, as a therapist, as a guru, I'm seeing this problem through your cat's eyes, and it's not looking good right now. I was working with a client whose cat is very aggressive. His cat attacks him. And this cat, you know, from my observation, really just wanted some space. But when I actually come in and say, look, the problem is you, not the cat. Man, are they surprised. <laughs> One of the problems that I run into a lot is when people have multiple pets, cats, dogs, canaries, mice, we want to make sure that they're getting along as far as food and, and water. Those are spaced out so that they're not in competition. Some of the typical advice I will tell a guardian is to maximize their space the best they can. That's usually with cat trees, sometimes that can be cat shelving, tunnels. We don't hide things like litter boxes, we keep them right out in the open our scratching posts and cat trees right in the mix, right where you're living. People really like that kind of guidance, and that's why I'm here to help.